name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week I attended a lecture at my local public library about the geology of the Monadnock region. The speaker was a professor from Franklin Pierce University who teaches orology. Orology, a word I did not know, is the study of mountains. It turns out that Mount Monadnock and the hills surrounding it is a relatively new mountain range. The granite, schist, and gneiss, which is spelled G-N-E-I-S-S, those rocks which comprise Mount Monadnock, which I call the rock, were formed far beneath the Earth's surface about 540 million years ago under intense heat and pressure. After forming, they were thrust upwards, the European tectonic plate smashing into the North American tectonic plate as the supercontinent known as Pangaea was coming together. These mountains likely reached heights similar to the Alps or even the Himalayas. Imagine 25,000 foot mountains just a few miles from right here. Then the uplift stopped as the plates began to move apart, which they're still doing today and erosion and glaciers went to work on the mountains, wearing them away to the modest 3,200 feet that Mount Monadnock stands today. These are powerful forces that have been at work for billions of years, shaping the earth, reshaping the landscape, volcanic activity, heat, subduction, uplift, ice, dramatic temperature shifts, powerful forces that continue to mold the world. As people of faith, we believe in the powerful forces that come from God which can shape our own lives today. God is eternal. God made the mountains on a geologic time scale that the writer of Genesis compresses into a week, a time scale that is hard for us to comprehend. It's funny to think of a 540 million year old mountain being a youngster. But God in Christ, through the work of the Holy Spirit, is living and real, giving us power in the here and now, power that matters, power that can make a difference. The writer of Genesis tells us that God made humankind in his own image, according to his own likeness and gave us dominion over all of creation. God, in creating the world, created us and gave us power to go on creating the world, to make it what it would become. God created the world in love, and love is the most powerful force. The Holy Spirit is the force of love made real and visible in our lives through us. The writer of Psalm 8 asks, What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. On Trinity Sunday, we celebrate the fact that God created us in love. And then in the coming of Christ, recreated humanity, drawing us closer to him than we had ever been by coming among us as one of us. And then gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to sustain us in our efforts to build Christ's vision of peace and freedom. The same God who formed the mountains formed you and you and Faith, and Audrey, and all of us, adorning us with glory and honor. And that same powerful God is always at work in the world, in our lives, inviting us to be part of the process of creating a new world. The earth has been traveling around the sun for 
billions of years. The process of filling the land and the sea with creatures took eons, not days. But the truth at the heart of the story is the same. We are God's partners in giving life and love and value to all of creation, leaving nothing and no one behind. We can't build mountains or make the stars in the sky twinkle, but we can remove barriers like hate and fear, and we can shine the light of Christ into the darkness of despair and injustice. We learn from Matthew that in his last moments with the disciples after the resurrection, Jesus led them to the top of a mountain back in Galilee, where they had first met him. Mountains are always important places in the Bible, from Mount Sinai to the hillside where Jesus gave his first sermon. God lifts up his word on mountains just as he lifted up the mountains themselves. When the disciples arrived and saw the risen Lord, they worshiped him. And they gave them what, what and he gave them what we call the Great Commission. Go, he said, go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Go, he tells them, and be the creators of a new reign of love. And remember, he promised, remember that I am with you always to the end of the age. To the end of the age. God is always with us. The number of days, the number of years, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we give our hearts and our lives to God for the purpose he has always made known, trusting that he will work through us and that he will be with us always to the end. Faith and Audrey and I in our communion class talked about following God's commandments and about the billions of people who have obeyed Christ's direction that we share this sacred meal in memory of him. It makes an impression when you consider that we are part of that community of witness to the power of God going back to those who were closest to Jesus in his time on earth. The Eucharist is the center. It's the sacrament that connects us to the power of God, the love of God, and the charge God gives us to go out into the world in Christ's name. As we share this meal today with Audrey and Faith, may we be reminded that we are co-creators with God, with the power to shape the world that is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Amen.